Welcome to the Deadbeat Devs tutorial on Mumble Server Administration, I suppose. Um, we're going to be talking about how to download, install, set up uh, your own Mumble server uh, on your own hardware. Um, Mumble, for those of you who aren't familiar, although I'm sure you are if you're looking at this video, it's a, a voice over IP solution similar to Vent or TeamSpeak, something like that, uh, but the, with a distinction that it is open source um, and all the goodness that comes with that, all the freedoms and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to be talking about, uh, I guess, sort of the, just the setup of Raspbian, uh, the setup of your Rumble server, and a couple of configurations you're going to have to do to get it working. Uh, it's pretty simple, but this is a nice step-by-step -step if you're kind of new to this stuff. Um, first things first, I'm going to talk about the software. Um, now I'm using a Raspberry Pi. If you want to follow exactly what I'm doing, um, you're going to have to start off by setting up your Raspberry Pi. So. Um, if you don't know how to do that, that's fine. I'll link to this uh, this raspberrypi.org video. Um, it, it does a step-by-step -step on how to uh, set up your Raspberry Pi, get Raspbian on it, um, and it's pretty simple. Um, you might already know how to do it. If that's the case, perfect. Um, if you chicken out at any point, I'll also link to this. Uh, this is a bunch of people who, for just a couple bucks a month, will host a mobile server for you. Um, you know, things like 18 cents a slot, whatever. Uh, and they're not bad deals, but I think it's cooler if you get to run it on your own hardware, you know. Anyways, um, and uh, this tutorial is going to be assuming you're on Windows, but it won't be that different for OS X or Linux, whatever. Um, you're going to want to download the Mumble client, uh, which looks a little something something like this. Connected. Oh, I already have it set up. Disconnected from server. And uh, you're going to want to download Putty. That's your SSH client you're going to use to remotely control the Raspberry Pi. So, get that out of the way. We'll start from scratch. So, um, so I'm gonna start off assuming you already have Raspbian or some other similar Linux operating system running on your Raspberry Pi or whatever you're using. And you have SSH uh, set up. If you, have, if you have a Raspberry Pi, by the way, the SSH server is installed by default. Um, I think it is on just most Linux distros. Just make sure you have an SSH uh, client installed. So the first thing you're going to want to do actually is find the IP address on your local network of your Raspberry Pi. You can do this by a ton of methods, but I like to just go to the uh, my router login page, or my router page, whatever, and look at attached devices. I see my Raspberry Pi is uh, .1.4. So I can SSH into my Pi by doing that making sure SSH is uh, selected, which automatically selects the cro uh, proper port, and hitting open. Uh, so you'll be prompted with a login screen. Um, you're gonna wanna log in, the default username and password is pi and raspberry. Um, so I changed mine, but anyways. Uh, once you're in here, you really just have a basic, um, basic probably out of date if you didn't do it the install online, uh, install of Raspbian. So first thing you want to do is sudo apt get update. This is just going through the repos, making sure you have all the latest software. It's just good practice. Um, so this is updating the repos. Next thing you want to do is upgrade, which will actually um, get the, the new software instead of just updating the list of new software that you need. All right, that's done. That kind of took a while. And like I said, the next step is just do uh, sudo apt-get upgrade and this will you have the updated repo list um, updated package list whatever from your uh, from your update command and now this is uh, going through and actually downloading that software so it says 10 megs of extra disk space will be uh, it will be freed oh my well yours is probably gonna say 10 extra megs of disk space will be used but um, I had already updated my pi so yeah, and I'll skip over this part too, so go. All right, so that took a little bit longer than I thought. Um, I just hit clear, clear my screen up. Um, so next thing we wanna do is actually just install the mumble server, and that's uh, just one command, sudo apt-get, um, because we're on a Debian-based thing, we're using apt. Uh, sudo apt-get install mumble server. Um, it's already installed for me. Um, if you don't have it installed, just, it's just gonna say, you know, X number of uh, kilobytes will be used if you install this. Just hit yes and it'll install. It'll take like a minute or so. Uh, and then you want to go ahead and de uh, use uh, the dpackage command to dpackage reconfigure 
to go through the mobile server configuration. So that's uh, sudo dpackage reconfigure. Uh, you can use tab to autocomplete. Mumble server. And give it a second, and it'll bring up a configuration menu with a couple options. Alright, so uh, do we want the mumble server to auto start on, on boot? Uh, yeah, why wouldn't we? It's really the only thing that's happening on this Raspberry Pi. Uh, do we want the mumble server to use higher priority than other processes? Yeah, it, it ensures low latency of audio. And do you want to set a super user account uh, password? Why not? No. Can't have just anybody signing into the super user account. Alright, so it takes a second and actually executes those commands. And actually right now the Raspberry Pi, uh, the mumble server is up and running. Um, the problem is you can only use it on your local network. Uh, so I'll show you, if you go to connect, um, you can hit add new here. And for the label, just call it whatever you want it to appear as in this menu. The address, you're going to want to type in the address of the Raspberry Pi, which we know is 1.4. Um, if you're not sure, just go back to your, uh, your terminal and do ifconfig. Uh, and you can see right here, the local network address is uh, 192.168.14. Oops. So you can do that. Um, the port, the default mumble port is 64738. And username, just type in whatever you would like. Um, and if you connect to that, you'll see uh, this is my mobile server with just a couple of rooms right here. Um, I'll also show you uh, to sign in as the super user. All you, all you need to change is do a different connection, probably. Um, and, and for the username, type in super user, no spaces, whatever. By default, there won't be a password. When you connect to this, connected. it'll connect uh, as the super user account, and you'll be prompted for that super user password you just supplied. Um, I don't know why this user by default can't talk, but he has the permission, or he's, he's the rights to change everyone else's permissions. So, so that's that. From server. Uh, now the next thing we need to do is actually make it so, like I said, the Raspberry Pi is usable by people over the internet. So to do that, you need to go back to your router page, and um, you need to set up some port forwarding. So there's going to be different location, Oops. different location for everyone, but... Um, you want to find something that says port forwarding, port triggering, triggering. You're going to do add a new service for the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And we'll be changing it to static so you don't have to worry about updating this. So, uh, and then with an edit service, let's see, I'll delete the service after. Um, service name, change it to something like mumble server, uh, make it a TCP UDP, and that port that we want. Um, the port that we need to type in is the 64738. Make sure I got that right. 64738, right. So sometimes you have to specify starting and ending port range in case you want to do a range, but. Jeez. <laughs> um, anyways, my roommate's getting crazy. So uh, yeah, just do that. Um, and I have a little menu here. I can have it select the Raspberry Pi for me. Uh, but if not, just type in the, the same IP address you've seen uh, previously. So I'm going to cancel that one because I don't need this one. Get rid of this. Because I already have my uh, my mumble service set up. And that's your port forwarding. Um, yeah, I don't need to save or anything. I do need to upgrade my phone. Anyways, um, so once you have that port forwarding set up, you're going to need to do a little work on the, uh, on the network configuration. So you'll need a couple pieces of information. Um, from ifconfig again, you're going to need to write down your broadcast number, your you know your local IP address, and the mask. Um, so you need those three things, and then you need to do, what is it, sudo route nee. So using the sudo root nee command, tech nee, you're going to want to get uh, gateway and destination, uh, and just write those down. Um, you need to then edit which, uh, the slash etc uh, network interfaces, so using your favorite text editor. My Nano is not my favorite text editor, but it's what's installed by default on the Raspberry Pi. Um, etc network slash interfaces, right. So go to this file and edit it. Um, mine is already edited, but the key things you're going to want to look out for um, we want to set up a static IP address, so 
By default, it's going to be DHCP, but we want the IP address of the Raspberry Pi to be the same every time it's on our network. So no matter what, it's going to be .1.4 in my case. So change this, which should be DHCP, to static. Uh, you can get rid of any comments if you want to keep them, doesn't matter. Uh, next line is going to be the address, which is the address of our Raspberry Pi, 1.4, that's what we want it to be all the time. Netmask, which is that uh, mask information you got from the uh, ifconfig. Um, network, which uh, was from the NEE command, um, broadcast and gateway, uh, which should be all things you wrote down. Let's see which one came from which. Yeah, so broadcast and gateway came from the NEE and... No, sorry, broadcast came from ifconfig. Okay. And then network came from NEE. Anyways, you can figure it out. You basically just need these, these five pieces of information. And this this bit down here is unchanged. Um, uh, if yours doesn't match it, you can change it to match it. Um, and your server should be all set up. Sorry, my roommate is like going crazy over a video game or some shit. Um, anyways, so just make sure your uh, network interfaces file matches mine. Um, oops. And then to say to exit and save in nano, anyways, it's just a uh, control X. Um, if you had changed anything, it'll prompt you to save and just hit Y, and uh, you'll write changes. Um, there's nothing else really that needs to be done. Um, you can just do a uh, sudo reboot. Um, so this will kick me out of uh, there you go, kick me out of putty because I shut the Raspberry Pi off. Uh, once it boots back up, you will have a working uh, working Mumble server. Um, and I'll show you how to get the uh, get the IP address of the Mumble server, and uh, that's what you can give to your friends, and later you can use for the dynamic DNS. So the Pi is rebooted, and I've logged back in, same way as before, using PuTTY. Um, uh, first thing, now, now what I need to do is uh, run this command to get my public IP, it's just say uh, wget to ipecho.net, and it echoes it out. So um, I see my public IP is 241778714. Uh, it'll be different by the time this is up, but anyways. Um, now what I need to do is, uh, quick aside, I've noticed a lot of times um, it doesn't work. Um, the mobile server has issues until they restart the service. So if you're having issues right, right off the bat with uh, connecting to your mobile server, um, just from the command line, just do uh, this command, sudo service. Ooh. Can't type. Pseudo, pseudo service. Uh, name the service. Mumble server. Restart. So uh, give it a couple seconds there, and the mumble server will be restarting. Um, so yeah, if you're ever having any issues connecting, just uh, try that. So uh, now that we have our public IP and the mumble server has been restarted, everything should be good. So what I've done is I went back to my connections and I. Uh, I typed in the public IP address, so the, the 2441778. See, it changed. 87144. Uh, username, label, whatever, uh, port unchanged, just the public IP, and connect to it. And you'll notice that I connected exactly like I did when I did the uh, 192.168.14. Um, so as of this as of this point, you can tell your friends to download the Momo client and send them that IP address. Um, as long as you keep the Pi running, the IP guaranteed won't change. Um, well, maybe not guaranteed, but it shouldn't change. Um, the issue You might run into an issue where after power cycling the Pi or something, or something happens, uh, whatever, uh, the IP address is going to be different and you'll need to you know, update your friends and uh, resend out the uh, IP address. What can fix this is something called dynamic DNS which uh, gives you a domain name that will always be the same regardless of what your IP changes to. I'm going to be covering that in a separate video because it's applicable to a lot more areas than just this Mumble server setup. You can click wherever I link it to go to that. Um, other than that, yeah, this is, uh, this is Mumble. I'll link to some like server administration stuff um, on how to like add rooms and users and um, you know kick out people, whatever. There's a ton of stuff you can do. And I'll link to some of the documentation, some of the Mumble documentation for that. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, that's how you set up Mumble server on your Raspberry Pi or any other hardware you want. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. Um, 
God damn it, dude. 